This week on Maker Update, a paper airplane machine, Microsoft gobbles up GitHub, a comic vomit bot, a Lego style megaphone, printer cable coasters, counting bees, joining wood with plastic bottles, and actual reality games in Hong Kong. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. Man, I missed you guys. It's been too long, but it's been nice to have some time to work on projects and organize my studio a little. I also adopted a dog this week, so things have been really crazy, but good crazy. But I got a good show for you this week with lots of projects and tips, so let's get started with the project of the week. Jerry DeVos has a fantastic design for a laser cut plywood paper airplane machine. He calls it the Miss Flyer and he's installed it in the printer room where he works. This way, if there's any misprints, people can recycle them into airplanes. Mechanically, the machine does two things. First, it creates the triangle folds on the front of the plane by lifting the corners and then knocking them back. The second phase of the machine pulls up and shapes the wings. What's critical here is that a small binder clip holds the base of the plane down so that this ramp section can pull up against it and form the wings. I love it and it looks like a great way to cheer up a boring copy room. You can find a link for the project's GitHub page in the description with all the links to the CAD files so that you can laser cut your own. Speaking of GitHub, in news this week, Microsoft is in the process of acquiring GitHub for $7.5 billion. In a statement from Microsoft, the company said that GitHub will retain its developer first ethos and will operate independently to provide an open platform for all developers in all industries. From what I've read, it sounds like Microsoft is motivated to have something like GitHub to bundle into what they already offer their corporate enterprise customers. At the same time, it sounds like they're sensitive to not screw up the community GitHub created over the years. Personally, I think it's good news and probably means that GitHub code and projects will be around for a long, long time. Time for more projects, rapid fire, Caden Batrack made a thermal printer robot that spits out randomly generated comics. The project uses a Raspberry Pi 3 and an Adafruit thermal printer. The images are pulled together randomly from a folder of different images that Caden includes in the code. Processing 3 software, running on the Pi, mashes them up and spits them out. If there's a particularly good combo that comes out, you can also hit a button to save a higher resolution version of it on the Pi. You can find links to the code and the build diary in the description. HP Biz made a life-size 3D printed version of this Lego megaphone. The project uses a little pre-built amplifier kit, a toggle switch, and a 9-volt battery. I'm tempted to say it would be something fun to give a Lego-obsessed kid, but I'm pretty sure kids and megaphones are a bad combination. On Instructables, Microsoft shows you how to make coasters from tiny bits of data cables. Who knew that boring printer cables were this colorful inside? The trick is to pack all the sliced bits into a section of PVC pipe, hot glue it to a flat surface to seal the bottom, and then pour in clear resin. It looks great, and I think it would be cool to scale it up to table size or a rectangle that you could hang as an art piece. Matt Kelsey has a great post up on how he uses a Raspberry Pi to count the bees coming and going from his beehive. I've seen systems before that use little bee-sized channels and IR sensors to count bees, but Matt takes a different approach. He's using a standard Pi camera to take one photo of the hive entrance every 10 seconds. The photos are then sent through a Python patch to count the number of bees in each image and graph the data over time. How cool is that? It's time for another cool tool review. This time we're gonna take a look at the Kamalon Gripper Speedmark 25 foot tape measure. I got this for around $9 on Amazon, which I think is a fantastic price for what this is. I'm gonna show you why it's so cool, and if you wanna get one for yourself, you can use the Amazon link in the description here, which helps support my videos and the Cool Tools blog. I've been trying out a lot of different tape measures recently. Some have a lot of features like magnets, or finger stops, or pencil sharpeners. This tape measure from Kamalon has none of those extras, but it's the tape measure I reach for the most often, and I've boiled that down to three reasons. First, it's the easiest to read. The numbers are black against a matte white tape that's easy to read indoors or in direct sunlight. The numbers are big and really easy to see, especially in the first foot where the numbers are gigantic. Second, the tape labels the fractional measurements. So instead of counting each little slice, you can quickly read the fractions of an inch. If you're old school, the top is unlabeled. Finally, it's well built. It feels just as sturdy as my more expensive tapes, but even if it does eventually break or get lost, at around $9, 
it's no hardship to replace it. That's the Kamalon 25 foot tape measure. They also make a smaller 16 foot version for around $4. You can find links to both in the description and you can find thousands of reader recommended tools like these at cool-tools.org. I have some other tools and tips to share. Adafruit has a new product called the PIR key. It's a little USB dongle that plugs into any computer and then you send it an infrared signal from remote control and it will execute your custom Python code stored on the board. It sells for $9. On Core 77, there's a piece on designers who are experimenting with using plastic bottles to heat shrink wood together. There's a few techniques that are shown. One creates grooves in the wood to give the bottle something to grip onto. The other technique cuts into plywood, threads the loops of bottles through, and heats them to tighten the joint. Also on Core 77, a great look at a Hong Kong game room called Best Box, where people play all of these big physical games like foosball but moving the ball with your breath or marble madness but with big giant tables that you move as a team or competitive exercise bikes where the losing team is drenched in water. Not only do the games look like fun but as a maker they look like a lot of fun to build and engineer. Finally Gareth Branwyn has a new book out called Tips and Tales from the Workshop. I've got an Amazon link for it in the description as you know, I'm a big fan of his Tips of the Week column on Make. This collects and organizes the best of those tips, plus it includes a lot of fun stories from well-known makers. I've even got a few things in here. I highly recommend it. Maker Fairs! Three fairs this week, including Port Jefferson, New York, Providence, Rhode Island, and Oric, Germany. If one's near you, go check it out. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Get yourself a tape measure if you can use one. And get on the email list for weekly emails of projects and tips. Okay? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.